Hello everyone. Today I'll be reviewing the Death Road to Canada Iceberg. If you don't know what an iceberg is, it is ranking pieces of information from top to bottom. The top being more well known whereas the bottom being more obscure and mysterious. Without further ado, let's get to it. Car Armor In Death Road to Canada, there is a driving event called Armored Garage where you can be able to upgrade your vehicle to have armor. The armor acts mostly as protection against zombies damaging your chassis. Infection, Sickness Icon There exists this icon where it was supposed to represent a character getting infected or sick by a zombie. However, it was never used in-game and is seen as a Discord emoticon. Toilet Genie in-game, if you were to open a total of 100 toilets, the Toilet Genie will appear granting you a wish such as more health, more food, or even waste your wish for zombies to appear. Tapping on speedometer and fuel meter buttons. This is merely a small feature that can be done in a vehicle while you wait for the next event to occur. Junk Item. While looting, you may come across an item called junk if you or a zombie breaks the item that contained it. It appears as an ammo case, but grants nothing in the end. Garf's Monday Event In-game, there is a recruitable rare character known as Garf. Aside from having horrible stats, his one ability is to cause a hard siege when his morale is too low. He'll continue to cause these sieges every time his morale is low. Cool It Cool It is an option that you can select if your character has low wits and attitude. Choosing this option will always yield horrible results than a normal negative response. However, doing it enough times will cause it to have three exclamation marks that only yields great rewards and even recruit characters that aren't normally obtained. Toilet Loot While looting, you can be able to loot toilets that may contain few items. However, there are some occasions where you can get weapons or even a skeleton if you are lucky. Secret Ending in a driving event called True Despair, your character finds a food crate with a dog poop on top of it. Failing to remove it will permanently drop morale, but if you have a stick in your vehicle trunk or have the friend of dog perk, you'll achieve the true secret ending. Despite being called the true ending, you still have to beat the game regardless. Skeletons of previous survivors in buildings while looting, you'll more likely encounter skeletons just laying around. However, there are some that have supplies and weapons near them which you could only imagine what could have happened there during that time. Day at the Circus. There is a rare character called Clown that can be recruited. If you were to bring the clown to the final siege in the game, all zombies will be zombie clowns which grants you an achievement. If you do win that game, the main menu background will also have zombie clowns. Zombo Points as Unomi and Tianomi's Currency Zombo Points are collectible currency that can obtain from beating sieges, beating the game, or finding floating gold skulls in buildings. This currency can be used in the Zombo town from Unomi or Tianomi for good results but their uses for these gold skulls is a mystery. Endless Modes Ending Endless Mode is a game mode that allows you to survive as long as you can. Despite being called Endless Mode, there is an actual ending after reaching Day 1000 which gifts you a ton of Zombo points as reward. Seasonal Rare Characters In the game, you can recruit seasonal characters on a specific holiday. These include Christmas, Thanksgiving, Valentine's Day, 4th of July, and Canada Day. However, you can trick the system by setting your time to that specific holiday. Octodad gets pushed out of the car. Octodad is a recruitable rare character that you can encounter. If you were to have a full party, you can somewhat recruit him temporarily but only to get pushed out of the vehicle moments after. The Mall Cops doesn't thank you. The Mall Cops are found in the Mall of the Dead Siege where they are right away seen fighting zombies. However, after beating the siege, there are no dialogues of them thanking you in any way. It could also mean that they are escorting you out of the mall. Lil, Sam Biwell and Oscar are added in by a $500 reward tier Kickstarter campaign. In the Death Road to Canada's Kickstarter campaign, there was a $500 tier which allowed you to put in your pets as special recruitable character. 
So far, Lil Sam Bayul and Oscar are the only ones that are from this Kickstarter. OPP Mode Experimental Characters The OPP Mode is a game mode that allows you to play any character in the entire game and more. This game mode has experimental characters that aren't usually playable and may be buggy in some cases. WYKTV Skeletons The WYKTV Skeletons are rare characters that can be recruited in a rare location called WYKTV Station. These skeletons were added in after the real WYKTV team were challenged by Rocket Cat to beat their game and losing overall. The rare character Broom can shoot wind projectiles with a Broom weapon. The Broom character is an OPP character that isn't seen anywhere else in the game. But it can shoot wind-like projectiles when carrying a Broom item. Alvis Disappearance Alvis is a rare character that you can recruit in the game. However, he can change into his secondary form when his morale is low enough and can leave your party if that were to persist. All this leaving this way grants you an achievement. The Tetragraphic Vortex is created by the Wizard. The Tetragraphic Vortex is a rare driving event where you can transform your characters and gain positive stats. However, the Wizard wouldn't have created this. Rather, it could be made by the Mad Scientist as they are capable of creating machines that transform people. NPCs picking up items. NPCs in Death Road to Canada seems to be programmed in a way to pick up items that are better than what they currently have. However, while most items can be obtained back by recruiting, some such as Samadhi's skeletons doesn't give it back to you. Zombies in Trader Camp Houses In Trader Camps, there is a chance that a few zombies may spawn randomly around the camp. While these random zombies may be rare, some camps such as Fence of Values or Trader Inferno are always set to have zombies spawn in. The Death Road Continues Despair event is based off of Death Road to Canada Max video. Death Road Continues is a rare despair event where a character at one health is left with a pet. This may cause the pet to become super trained and continue on. This event is very similar in a way that the Death Road to Canada Max video is played out as well. Old Medical Item Sprite In Death Road to Canada, the medical item icon once had a red cross rather than the current green one. Why this was the case is unknown but at least we are able to see the red cross on one of the medical items. Certain characters having a different color palette in other consoles. On console ports of Death Road to Canada, there are certain rare characters that have a different color palette than their original. It is confirmed by Keppa that this change was made for copyright reasons. Claw Book Dropped by Dog Trader In trader camps, you might come across a dog trader that sells ammunition. In older versions of the game, you can be able to obtain a claw book from them upon their death. All what the claw book does is turn your unarmed attack into a claw attack. Goblin. In Death Road to Canada, anytime you choose an option that leads to bad luck, your character will claim that they heard a goblin laughing somewhere and wants to find it. Other than being shown as text, the goblin is never physically seen in-game. Bone Zone. Bone Zone is a threat said by Sir Boney if you were to say cool it. While we aren't sure exactly what the bone zone is, there is an event called Death Car to right here where they'll find a wrecked car with skeletons inside. If a character has low wits, they'll mention that those skeletons were trapped in the bone zone. The Demon Hecatrius in the Unsummoned Rare Event. The Unsummoned is a rare driving event where a demon comes out of the vehicle floorboard that asks for pizza. Giving him food will allow the demon to turn a character into a demon with red skin and a pitchfork. The demon picture used in this event is never seen again in later versions of the game. Sona Custom Made Character Sona is a custom made character created as a modded character for Death Road to Canada. While it had animations for it walking around, it was never seen in game in the end. Death Road to Canada predicted toilet paper being valuable. 
there is a driving event called more valuable than gold shows your group finding a roll of toilet paper and realizing that it is very rare due to it being the first thing to run out in stores. Comparing this with the toilet paper shortage during the current pandemic is nothing more than a coincidence. Wonkor Burger Changing Skin Color There is a rare event called Extra Deluxe Ultima Wonkor Burger where you are given the chance to eat a special burger. Consuming the burger will grant your character some stats and even changing their skin color randomly. Why their skin color changes is unknown, but some may say that it is due to the burger being a special variant. Breaking Prison Cage in Police Station In Death Road to Canada, there are certain objects in the game that can and cannot be destroyed. One of those objects being the prison cage that is found in the police station. While it is possible to get stuck in there, there isn't much confirmation that it is able to be destroyed. Cannibals happened due to previous survivors not having enough food and going insane. This is based off of Cannibal Crossing, a game made by Rocketcat, where it follows a slightly similar experience as Death Road to Canada where you fight cannibals and build settlements. It is shown that these cannibals mostly began from a faulty lab experiment. More information on that later. Well of Wishes in the Crypt of Decay well of Wishes in the Crypt of Decay is a phrase mentioned a few times in Death Road to Canada. While it was confusing at first, this is actually a reference to an Easter egg found in the game Quake where the Well of Wishes is home to the famous Dopefish. The other two graves name in the Three Graves Rare Event. The Three Graves is a rare event where you come across these graves with some names being blocked out. The only name out of the three is the one with the words LUI, it is possibly a reference to the creator of Terminator Revolution comics, Louis Antonio, and a famous line that reads there is no fate but the one we make. Fittingly, the grave contains a bunch of weapons. Glitched Floor Room In older versions of Death Road to Canada, you have a chance to encounter some glitched rooms or trader camps that have a strange layout. While it may tamper gameplay for a little bit, it was interesting to come across some things like this while it lasted. Unlooted buildings being filled with rubble after some time. In the game, you'll come across certain buildings that are filled with rubble after certain amount of time. The exact reason why it happens is unknown, but it could be there to prevent players from spending too much time in a single stage. Unobtainable rusty truck and snow plow vehicles. The rusty truck and snowplow are unusable vehicles that are only found in specific areas. Rusty trucks are found in trader camps, snowplows are seen as movable barricades at the Canada border. Despite being unobtainable, there are apparently stats for these vehicles. All trees were once gnomes. One of the rare characters named Nomi has an epilogue that says that he turned into a tree after reaching Canada. However, since there are trees everywhere in the game, it could be possible that they were once gnomes as stated by some of Nomi's lines. Cannibal Crossing is the prequel to Death Road to Canada. Comparing Cannibal Crossing and Death Road to Canada, it almost feels like a prequel due to Cannibal Crossing taking place way before the zombie outbreak. Things such as military soldiers, base building, and crafting are features that aren't normally seen in Death Road to Canada. Unfortunately, Keppa has stated that it is only considered a prequel if the last bodybuilder is in that game, which he isn't. Where do people go when Mason is in your group? Mason is a rare character in Death Road to Canada who is one of the few characters that has ways to remove characters randomly. At a certain point, Mason will suddenly feel better and that a group member also went missing. Despite obviously caused by Mason, where he takes them is unknown but let's be honest. Mason is a good friend. Free Boot Event Increases Luck Free Boot is an uncommon walking event where you come across a boot that is just laying there. It's just a throwable weapon if you pick it up, but it giving good luck doesn't mean anything. Construction Worker and Romero Construction Worker and Romero are two characters that are in the game's code but not yet released. However, while models for these characters exist, there isn't too much information on what they'll do in-game. Food in City of Crushed Hopes The City of Crushed Hopes is known as the longest siege in the entire game. 
while there are plenty of supplies in the buildings, there is apparently food found in them as well. Why food is found in these buildings is unknown, despite not needing to eat once the siege is over. Gordo Mason and Link responding in a dialogue. In the game, there are few rare characters such as Gordo, Mason, and Link that don't say anything. However, there is a rare chance that they'll respond to another character's dialogue out of nowhere. Their response is usually them introducing themselves regardless of the dialogue's topic. Hot Dog Car The Wiener Mobile is a rare vehicle in the game that has gone through some changes. The original design had to be changed due to it being very similar to Oscar Mayer's Wiener Mobile. Due to that, the vehicle has changed into the Animal Mobile, but still keeping its ridiculously tough chassis. Cardboard Tube's True Power Cardboard Tube is a special weapon in the game that has the largest knockback out of all other weapons. This weapon is held by only two rare characters in the game and found in certain rare buildings. Toilet Heaven Toilet Heaven is a rare location that can randomly spawn in the city looting event. The building is almost maze-like showing bathroom displays, several toilets to open, and even a special toilet that contains 10 food in it. Getting Governor Emperor to Canada The Governor Emperor is a rare character that will try to scam you or even try to make you feel bad so that you'll recruit him. On top of that, he'll steal food and abandon your party after a single day of recruiting him. However, it is somehow possible to bring him to Canada, but it'll be considerably difficult. Thankfully, there is no achievement for doing this. Untouched Grocery Store is potentially the first hot spot where the zombie outbreak took place. The Untouched Grocery Store is a special looting event where there are over 60 food but jam-packed with zombies. The description for this place is said that the outbreak happened so fast that everyone inside turned into zombies before anything was taken. This could mean that this store is possibly the first place that has started the outbreak in Death Road to Canada. Every Death Road to Canada game is personalized. This is just a joke made to follow Mish Koz's Mario 64 Iceberg video where at the very bottom of that iceberg mentions that the game is personalized. Zombies are stronger than the last bodybuilder. In the game, the last bodybuilder is known as the strongest character in the game. Being able to pick up cars and even instantly destroying you if you were to challenge him. However, zombies are able to damage him like every other character in the game despite being so strong. Springa. Springa is a modded character that a player once tried to remove, but kept refusing to be removed. This sparked a small creepypasta made in the Discord community. Thankfully, it was later debunked that it was due to following the wrong instructions. Death Road to Canada is Half-Life 3. If you were to bring Gordo to Canada for the first time, you'll be given an achievement that is titled HL3 or Half-Life 3. It could be that the very moment you recruited him, the story of Half-Life 3 was started and ended by your character's entire adventure. Epic. You don't need to know who Epic is. Don't worry about it. And there you have it. That is the death road to Kanda Iceberg for you. While there are still more hidden things that I'm not aware of, maybe you can discover them out in the death road. With that being said, see you all next time.